Hi everybody, it's September 16, 2017. Uh, this was brought to my attention by a subscriber who left a comment below my video last night. College Park, Maryland will allow non-citizens to vote in local elections. If you do a search on this, you will find that most of the articles, the headline, headline reads the same with the same language. Let me correct that headline. College Park, Maryland will allow illegal immigrants to vote on all matters concerning College Park. It is not just elections, and I am so tired of this PC language, non-citizens or um, undocumented immigrants. They are illegal immigrants. We have immigration laws, and unfortunately, we have become a country that is no longer ruled by law. When you have sanctuary cities, you have government officials who are breaking the law, protecting illegal immigrants within those cities. When you have city governments and town governments allowing illegal immigrants the right to vote, well, they render citizenship meaningless, but they're breaking the law. They're breaking the law. And I cannot believe the radical change in the American psyche today. And the American psyche means that the majority of Americans have this psyche. It doesn't mean every American has the psyche. But what took place in College Park? Okay, um, this started back in June, and I'm going to play just a bit of the city council meeting on this issue, whether or not to allow illegals to vote without any residents present. And that took place in June. They wanted to push that through, but I guess residents learned what their city council was doing and the vote was delayed. Then the city council had a vote on whether or not to let the residents decide the issue for themselves or to just allow the city council to decide the issue for them. That vote on the referendum came back a tie. It was four to four. The mayor broke the tie against allowing the residents to decide the issue. The mayor put it in the hands of the city council. But from my bit of research on this, it did seem like the majority of College Park residents did not want illegal immigrants to have the right to vote on matters concerning their community. The mayor snatched it out of their hands. That is what is happening in local government. That is why in so many videos I have said, Americans, you need to get involved in your local government. Your local government is far more important than state government or federal government. What goes on in your local government has a direct impact on you direct. So they are also implementing Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 policies, and that will ultimately deprive you of your property rights, your right to own your own property. Very, very important because the implementation of Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 policies is happening locally. But what have I seen throughout the years? Americans just don't care. That is now the American psyche. So um, this mayor broke that tie against allowing the residents to decide the issue. But listen to a quote from this mayor. The mayor, uh, this vote that they wanted to, well, if you listen to the full council meeting, you will hear how they're trying to ram this through so illegals had the right to vote in the November election. And they talk about, well, we can change the, uh, the timeline for registration. It was 28 days. We can make it 14 days. The delay came about because residents clearly got wind of what the city council was about to do. What did the mayor say about this delay? He had hoped the delay on this vote 
would bring less attention to the matter. Less attention to the matter. City council, town council, they do not want their community members to know what they are doing. That's why it's really important for all of you to get involved. Find out what your city council and your town councils are actually voting on. Okay, so this was, what, four days ago. This came in 11 hours ago. College Park, Maryland won't allow illegal immigrants to vote on all matters concerning College Park. What happened? What happened? In June, the council voted to change their own charter. And that change requires the affirmative vote of six elected officials to change the charter. The vote on whether or not to allow illegal immigrants the right to vote only had four. The city council wasn't even following its own rules. They break their own rules. See, when you're no longer a country ruled by law, anything goes. And when you have people sitting on these councils, what goes is what they want. They don't represent the community members. So let's listen to just a little bit of this council meeting. You could, um, if you introduce something next month, you could adopt it in August, and then it takes 50 days to become effective. So that would be um, early October. So. so we could make it effective for the November election, um, I believe. But we would have to, yeah, it, it would run into the registration issue because then we'd have to have a supplemental registration list, and we'd have to talk about when would we sh when would we close the books for registration. For the county, we close registration 28 days before the election. But for a supplemental list for non-citizens, we wouldn't have to have that much new time. I think we could do it. Ms. Yes, thank you. Um, could, I would like to ask, um, and the question is posed here as well, um, what type of immigration status are you considering when you're talking about non-citizens? Well, there's a lot of different visas we could consider. There are people who do not have any, who are undocumented. Um, it depends on what you're talking about as to whether or not I would vote for this. Do we need a definition? Dr. Kabir, do you know what Pyrosville and Tacoma Park do? Pyrosville and Tacoma Park do not ask about immigration status and do not care if the resident is oh. in their city legally or not. Do not care. They don't care. They don't care if there are people in their community with illegal status. And that, I'm sorry to say, is the American psyche. That is the collective. Americans on the whole, they just don't care about anything except their own life. And unfortunately, what happens then is they feel the impact of what these city council members and town council members vote on. That's when they start to care. And that's when it's too late. Right. So if I recall when we talked about this, and we did bring this up somewhat in 2014, mm -hmm. and one of the challenges that was raised, I think, by Mr. Rosen, perhaps by Ms. Miller as well, is that the challenge of, of, of us getting into the business of determining who does have legal status. So they're, they're of, of asking for, it, it, it would be logistically and administratively simpler for us to just not, 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 not care. Not, not, care. <laughs> <laughs> not care. Yeah, let's laugh about it. We just don't care. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have to say, guys, this is the condition of the American people now. They don't care. And that leaves all of us having to live a reality that is shifting towards tyranny, communism. 
Now, does it not undermine the value of citizenship when you have sanctuary cities, uh, cities that protect illegal immigrants, when you have munici uh, municipalities, which apparently 10 in Maryland allow illegals to vote, when you have city council members and town council members allowing people to vote who are illegal, that is their status, does it not undermine the value of citizenship? Of course it does. The path to citizenship is somewhat arduous depending on the individual. What is the path to citizenship in our country? It is not allowing a city council member to just, well, here you go. You have all the rights and privileges of a citizen, but you don't have to follow the law. Department of Homeland Security site, natural in, uh, naturalization information. Um, before an individual applies for naturalization, he or she must meet a few requirements. They must be 18 years of age. They must be a permanent resident, have a green card for at least five years, show that they have lived for at least three months in the state or district in which they are applying for citizenship, demonstrate continuous residence in the United States for at least five years, immediately preceding uh, they applying for citizenship, show that they have been physically present in the United States for at least 30 months out of the five years, immediately preceding filing for citizenship, be able to read and write and speak basic English, have a basic understanding of U.S. history and government, be a person of good moral character, demonstrate an attachment to the principles and ideals of the U.S. Constitution. And what exactly do they have to do? They have to take tests. They have to take a speaking test. An applicant's ability to speak English will be determined by an, uh, an officer. Reading test. An applicant must read out loud one out of three sentences correctly to demonstrate an ability to read in English. A writing test. An applicant must write one out of three sentences correctly. A civics test. There are 100 civics questions on the naturalization test. And they have to pass that test. And I can guarantee you that American citizens who were born here probably couldn't pass that test. So, you have city council members, you have town council members just deciding for themselves, hey, let this illegal just have all the rights and privileges of a citizen without going through this whole process. What a slap in the face to all of those who have come here to our country who have gone through this process and who, well, one of the requirements is you have to take an oath of allegiance to the United States. You do have to understand your rights and responsibilities as a U.S. citizen. And unfortunately, those what, what's the responsibility of a U.S. citizen? To just not care and laugh. That is the responsibility of Americans today. The oath of allegiance. It means that people from other countries who go through this process and actually take an oath of allegiance, their allegiance is to the Constitution. They have adopted the uh, the values and traditions of the United States. Now, you can, um, you know, make all of the arguments that you want. We never had a constitution. We never had any values. Um, and I could also argue along with you. But all I am talking about is Americans don't even care about the law anymore. And what happens when you are somebody who does care about the law? You get called names. I'm going to let you listen to uh, the 
city council meeting that did involve residents on this issue and hear what they have to say. It's frightening what has happened because Americans are really revealing themselves as a people that really are so incredibly dumbed down, so immature, they can't argue the issues, they can't argue their position. All they do is resort to ad hominem attacks, just, just attacking you personally. We need to understand why this is necessary to be done, and I think the citizens need to be able to express their views on this, and the referendum would be a great way to do that. Unfortunately, I feel that the council makes an assumption that, um, you know, that everybody in the city is in favor of non-citizen voting, and I don't necessarily think that that's the case um, across the board. Uh, while we want to protect immigrants, we also want to protect the integrity of the voter list, and it cannot be a secret list. Referendums have worked against civil rights in this country. A referendum will also increase anti-immigrant backlash and xenophobia that we're already seeing in the comments made to this body and to next door. Do you want to stand with the voices of xenophobia, extremism, and nativism? Or do you want to say to this city and to the world, the country that's watching, here in College Park, we stand for inclusion. Here in College Park, we treat immigrants as equal participants in our democracy. Here in College Park, we want to join the 11 other municipalities, localities that have successfully implemented non-U.S. citizen voting for many years, and we are going to do that tonight. If you give it away, you diminish the amount of work that naturalized citizens in College Park and across the country, frankly, have done in order to become citizens so that they can have that value currency in order to be able to vote in the United States. They worked for that. They waited for it, they paid for it, they prayed for it, and they got it. And you want to give it away like it's just something you can just give away. How dare you, frankly? And anybody who supports it should frankly be ashamed of themselves, honestly. You really should. I just learned in line tonight why it's important that this go to referendum. It's because being in this environment as a conservative and being as opposed to this, it can be a little scary getting up here. And I'll tell you why, because I was just called a Nazi in this line. I'm disgusted, but not surprised by the amount of xenophobia and white supremacists in this room tonight. All right, please, I'm gonna ask people to please be quiet and also please refrain from name calling. Again, I appreciate the passion on this issue. But... Sir, there's one person testifying at this point. Thank you. If you'd like to testify, please get in line. I understand there's a lot of there's a lot of fear by people who are scared of immigrants. There's a lot of fear from people who are scared of black and brown people coming into the city of College Park. However, that's stupid. I am a naturalized citizen of the United States of America. I uh, treasure my citizenship, and I'm not a, I'm not at all for non-citizen voting. You have heard from me before, so I will not repeat myself. But I would like to ask you to please put this to a non-binding referendum as uh, proposed. That will enable you to hear what the majority of voting residents have to say. In 1996, I decided to become a citizen. Why? Because I wanted to be part of this country. Because it was a privilege to be able to vote. And in that way, I opposed to this charter. Because we all, all the residents of the College Park, should decide who if we agree or disagree. And there will never be pro any problem. But as a privilege, I encourage you to postpone this until all the residents that vote on this. If you vote against this charter resolution or you vote to put it to a referendum or to delay it, does that make you a racist or a bigot or a xenophobe? No, it does not. 
but it does mean you will have missed a huge opportunity, I think. An opportunity to take an affirmative stand against the politics of exclusion and hate. Any delay of this issue will basically just magnify the problems that have already been existed in like the zenith on the comics and some of the other very, very negative comments that have been made about this resolution and the potential consequences of it. Uh, civil rights is not an issue that should be put up to popular vote. If we voted on civil rights issues in the past, it's very unlikely, as Elena said, that many of the people on our council would even be eligible to be on city councils or hold elected positions in this country. I am in support of the Charter Amendment to extend voting rights to non-citizen residents. I am in support of the city acknowledging that I am a valued member of the community. And I am in support of the city being inclusive, in, especially during this intensely divisive time. Yeah, I mean, there's too many unanswered questions for me. Uh, so my first impulse is no. Uh, we need more time to, to, to let you answer all these questions for us. So we go to these schools, we live in this community, we use the library, we are all here together. And, you know, um, we should really let love Trump hate. One thing I've noticed about this debate is that there has been a lot of concern about citizenship issues and the Constitution. The Constitution does not prohibit non-citizens from voting, not the uh, U.S. Constitution, not the Maryland Constitution. So I believe that all citizens are included, and I invite those non-citizens to follow the path to citizenship to vote. Let's be real. Like, some of that language wasn't even dog whistle racism. That was just straight up racism. Which gets me to my next point. White people, we need to do better. This is not a response. Xenophobia, racism, the hatred that permeates through our culture today didn't happen in a vacuum. And, you know, people say, keep it local. Great. You want to keep it local? White people. Any attempts okay. to delay um, simply You delay can it. click on the link below and listen to more of these residents. Uh, I will tell you that this woman would not be in my life. Um, it's scary to see how incredibly dumbed down and attacking have Americans become. White people? Is this really an issue about race? Is it an issue about uh, whether or not somebody is hateful? Or is it an issue that is very clear? Whether you break the law or whether you uphold the law. And that is what's going on. But these Americans who have no brain cells, obviously, and they are just shooting out all of these immature attacks, personal attacks, calling people racist and Nazis and xenophobes. And they're hateful, hateful. And they think that voting to allow illegal immigrants will reduce divisiveness. They are creating the divisiveness that they talk about, that they hate, apparently. They're the ones who are creating it. This is very, very upsetting. And again, I am going to say that, you know, you, you listen to these residents, that man who said, you know, it's actually scary to come up here to say, you know, I want uh, the law to be upheld. And that's essentially what he was saying. But no, you hate brown and black people. If that were the case, if white Americans hated brown and black people, we would see white Americans out on the streets protesting this naturalization process, and they would be protesting to only allow white European immigrants to naturalize. But you don't hear that. That's not what's going on. What is going on is whether we uphold the law and continue to be a country ruled by law, which unfortunately, because of these Americans, we are not. Or do we just say, hey, our laws are just meaningless 
and throw everything away. All links are below.